It is probable that more people alive have read Tolkien's The Lord of the Rings saga than have read the Bible. A very small number of those readers, however, will be familiar with the collection of Finnish folk ballads known as the Kalevala. Let alone be aware of the enormous influence they had on Tolkien's internationally adored mythical cosmos and his first attempt at writing mythical prose. The story of Kulervo, one of Tolkien's earliest pieces of fiction that was essentially a reworking of a story from the Kalevala and one of the most stunningly unusual and dismally tragic stories in the history of all known folklore. In a lecture given in 1914, the year he wrote the story of Kalervo, Tolkien would explain his attraction to these Finnish stories, describing them as a rich profusion and luxuriance, queer and strange, unrestrained and grotesque, alerting his refined and scholarly audience to the unprecedentedly animistic character and primitive tone of these stories. He declared that on reading the Kalevala, we are taking a holiday from the whole course of progress of the last three millennia and going to be wildly unhellenic and barbarous for a time. The Kalevala consists of ballads passed down orally over generations and was compiled in written form by Elias Lonroth in 1835. Rather like the Grimm brothers in Germany, Lonroth was driven along with the North European wave of national romanticism to make a vital written record of folklore, culture and the particular language that was fast dying out. The Kalevala was first published in a full translation in English in 1888 and Tolkien first encountered this particular book in 1911 when he was a student at King Edward's school in Birmingham. Immediately fascinated with the book, which he described as a collection of wild, uncivilized and primitive tales, he borrowed a book on Finnish grammar and attempted to read the Kalevala in the original Finnish. Now, to the reassurance of readers trying to learn Finnish, Tolkien, an expert in languages, said that the Finnish language makes a strong bid for the place of the most difficult in Europe. Tolkien's choice of the tale of Kulervo as his first attempt at working out a mythopoetic form of prose is notable. Kulervo, a tragic and yet impressively resilient character, has an inauspicious start in life. While in his mother's womb, he survives the massacre of his tribe by his father's jealous brother, Untamo, who then takes Kulervo's mother to be as his wife. When Kulervo is only three months old, Untamo overhears him vowing to revenge the death of his father's tribe and attempts to kill him numerous times. Although accursed, Kulervo is not without a protective magic that foils his uncle's attempts, enabling him to grow up, albeit massively disgruntled, in Untamo's household until he is sold into slavery. Kalervo's magic continues to bless and blight him in equal turns, and as he pursues his lust for revenge, his fate only thickens until lifted finally by the hope of love. This particular girl turns out to be his long lost sister, an unwitting incest that leads to double suicide. Kalervo's fate seems sealed whichever path he takes. As a budding comparative mythographer, Tolkien was drawn to the underlying tragic, heroic connections of Kalervo, Beowulf, and the Norse hero Sigmund. Despite these comparisons, Tolkien was struck by how the Finnish tales had an earthy, poetic logic, quite unlike anything he had come across. I am very fond of these poems, he declared in his 1914 lecture. They are literature so very unlike any of the things that are familiar to general readers. They are so un-European and yet could only come from Europe. Unlike the kindred mythology of Europe, he observed with the stories of the Kalevala, you are at once in a new world, he said, and can revel in an amazing new excitement. You feel like Columbus on a new continent. Tolkien saw it as significant to an appreciation of the Kalevala that Finland was one of the last lands in Europe to convert 
to Christianity, thereby leaving a more recent legacy of paganism than traced in other European countries. Tolkien's encounter with Finnish folklore, then its magical and richly textured topography, as well as its language, was a powerful lyrical and mythical encounter which he interpreted in terms of the theories of comparative mythology of his era, as well as a starting point for the development of Middle-earth, its various peoples, genealogies, language and geography. So in the autumn of 1914, ensconed in his rooms at Oxford University, he began working on the story that would mark the origins of the enormous influence of Finnish mythology on his work. Although Tolkien could make certain correspondence with other known myths, it was the distinctly otherworldly and yet undoubtedly human nature of the Kalevala that made the most impression on him. Drawing him to the odd yet powerfully rendered persona he would call a race of unhypocritical scandalous heroes and sadly unsentimental lovers. Tolkien experts have written much on the influence of the Kalevala on the universe of Tolkien's work. The cosmology, the tragic, deceitful, flawed, fated and cherished characters, the shamans, the magic of the song, the topography of domestic and distant lands, and not least the parallel between the epic pursuit of the Kalevala's mysteriously beneficent object of the Sampo and Tolkien's rings of power. Tolkien's rendering of the story of Kalervo is a study that he would adapt and develop into his own mythical world, notably using Kalervo as the model for his character Turin Turambar from the Children of Hurin, an outlawed figure who was also living under a curse. Turin, after years of ill fortune, finally believes the curse lifted and takes a wife, only to discover from the spiteful last words of a dragon he kills that she is in fact his long lost sister. As in the story of Calervo, she kills herself and then he kills himself in turn. In a letter to his friend, the poet W. H. Auden, Tolkien wrote in 1955 of his indebtedness to the Kalevala and Calervo. The germ of my attempts to write legends of my own to fit my private languages was the tragic tale of the hapless Calervo in the Finnish Kalevala. It remains a major matter in the legends of the first age which I hope to publish as the Silmarillion, he wrote. It was not only the remarkable mytho-poetic stories of the Kalevala that inspired Tolkien, but also the phonetic resonance of the language that led him to study Finnish grammar and to develop his own legendary language, which he called Quenya. This elfish language, known to all fans of the Peter Jackson films, was inspired by the languages that Tolkien said gave him the greatest pleasure. Finnish and Greek. Discovering Finnish was, Tolkien wrote to Auden, like discovering a complete wine cellar filled with bottles of an amazing wine of a kind and flavour never tasted before. It quite intoxicated me, he wrote. Tolkien was clearly drawn to the story of Calervo and the tales of the Kalevala, because not only did they represent a rich, primitive and poetic mentality of a people undetached from nature, but because they told in a visceral and lyrical manner of the perennials of human love and suffering, not only of the magical entities, but also of very human characters who behave with a singular lack of conventional dignity and with a readiness for tears and dirty dealing. Why read of Calervo and the Kalevala? Well, Let's get Tolkien to answer this one. As he said, you should read the Kalevala for the delight of the earth, the wonder of it, the essential feeling as of the necessity for magic, that juggling with the golden moon and silver sun that is man's universal pastime. These are the things to seek in the Kalevala. <laughs>